Heather was okay with this, and I left her my number. Going upstairs to my room, red cordless phone receiver in hand, I paced the hallway, walked down to the bathroom, back to my room about five times, and while I was doing that, I was saying a prayer. Okay, I see in a low whisper. I hope you are here. I hope you have my answers. Please, oh please have my answers. Anyone? Yes, I must admit, I did feel a presence around me. And I was saying that prayer. I just couldn't tell whom it was, but knew it, it was loving. Making my last pace to my room, the phone rang in my hand. I answered it on the first ring. It was T. Hello? Yeah, she's here, he says. And I hear him on his end and the phone over to his mom. How did the conversation start out? I think she introduced herself like any other person would, but like I had stated earlier, I don't recall her name. It is nearly 20 years since I first spoke to her on the phone. Whatever I share in this chapter is the truth, and to the best of my recollection, sorry. <sighs> Walking back down the hall to the bathroom, I looked in the reflection of the body length mirror in on the door. Listening to what TM had said shocked me on what she first said. I see a little boy come forth. Did someone die young in your life? This surprised me. I didn't know that my baby brother would come to her. I watched my mouth drop open on the mirror. Hello? You there? Uh, yeah, I said, finding my voice. I walked into Mom and Dad's room and stood in front of the window facing out the backyard. Did someone die young in your life? Jim asked me again. Yeah, my brother. He died as a baby. Jim got interrupted, interrupted with my phone conversation because her granddaughter wanted something. I waited for TM to get back on the line with me, listening to what she was saying to her granddaughter.